Hi folks, welcome to RJ Impact. Today we're going to be talking about the goings on in week 5 of the Ramesh Sunni Balwani Theranos trial. And this is the second of two parts commenting on week 5. As a reminder, Balwani is in court accused of multiple instances of fraud against doctors, patients and investors in connection with his role as COO of Theranos. He was co-accused with Elizabeth Holmes whose trial finished in January this year and who was found guilty on four counts of fraud and conspiracy to defraud investors. His trial is being held separately due to claims of abuse that Elizabeth Holmes made against him at her trial. So continuing the trial this week, we had the resumption of the cross-examination of Mark Pandori. And as a quick recap on where we left off with him, we'd heard the start of his cross-examination before the trial was then interrupted because Pandori couldn't remember an email he sent on his last day at Theranos with an attachment called Transition Report. There was a dispute about its authenticity at that point. And well, that was cleared up. And so we had Cesares for the defence, who picked up from where he left off. As a general comment, Pandori couldn't remember the exact timeline of events at the point around the time he left Theranos, so there was quite a lot of clarification relating to dates of various emails and the chronology of the various events. Now, one key piece of evidence that was discussed related to an email that Pandori sent in May 2014 to senior managers, and in it he recommends getting more Edison machines for the lab. So this at first sight would seem like a bit of a concession and somewhat at odds with his testimony under the prosecution examination when he said that the machines needed more R&D. And he also agreed that he'd never told anyone that the devices shouldn't be used on patients. Now his reason for saying that was that he didn't have the authority at that time to make that call. He then also said, well they failed so frequently we needed more of them. Cesaris then asked him, You're not saying to stop using them, are you? Not in this email, said Pandori. Cesare showed him another email from January 2014 in which he'd praised the calibre of the Theranos workforce and Balwani had told him, we will not fail. Pandori had then written in response, I have to say, with people like this, I have no doubt. So you might call these uh, exchanges couple of wins for the defence, even if quite slight, we then had the final re-examination by John Bostick this time for the prosecution. He asked Pandori about the proficiency tests on the Edisons and he said he was very new and was concerned that they were not being done correctly. The results raised concerns about the device's accuracy, he said. He continued, I thought this could be something more mature in assisting the public's health and it was far from that. We then heard another telling anecdote about Balwani's nature when Pandori explained what happened when he left Theranos. Apparently he met with Holmes and Balwani and resigned. Immediately, Balwani told a security guard named Edgar to walk him out of the building to his car and search it. When they got to the car, Pandori said, You don't have to search my car, Edgar. And Edgar said, You're right, I don't have to search your car. And Pandori left Theranos. Pandori was prompted to say that he didn't mention his belief that the Edisons shouldn't be used on patients in his transition memo because he'd already told Balwani and Adam Rosendorf. I didn't have the authority to make that decision. Asking repeatedly would be akin to hitting my head against the wall. Pandori says Sonny Balwani and Elizabeth Holmes didn't give him the authority he needed as a lab director to do his job. It was very interesting to note that many jurors at this point were making copious notes. We then had Constance Cullen. She was the sharing plough scientist who we heard from in the Holmes trial and you can see her testimony in that trial here. It was Jeff Schenk for the prosecution who led the questioning. So we heard that she'd spoken to Elizabeth Holmes in 2009 about using Theranos devices to validate some blood tests. If validated, the company could then use the devices on patients in clinical trial drug studies. Cullen says Shering Plough entered a contract with Theranos for about $279,000, and the validation study would take place over five days. During a May 2009 due diligence meeting to discuss that trial, Holmes wouldn't disclose key details about the testing devices, but Cullen couldn't remember if Balwani had attended. Cullen said, it's incumbent on us to have a good understanding of how the instruments work. We were not able to get that understanding from Miss Holmes. At each attempt to ask other individuals, Miss Holmes interjected a response on their behalf. In June 2009, Cullen asked for the data because it was an outstanding item. We'd paid for the work and we wanted closure. 
Now, after receiving it, a Theranos worker then asked Cullen in December that year, so six months later, if she wanted to discuss the tech further. But they didn't, in light of the due diligence issues. Apparently, they were working hard on a merger as well at that time. We weren't interested in pursuing the technology, and there was a lot of other work that was higher priority. Prosecutor Jeff Schenk then showed the jury the now infamous email that Holmes had sent to Walgreens execs in 2010 with attached validation reports, including a report with a Sharing Plow logo on it. Cullen says Theranos didn't ask permission to use the Sharing Plow logos. Now, just so that you're aware, these had caused a number of issues earlier and before the jury were in. Essentially, Balwani's team didn't want them brought into evidence at all because they had made the case that Balwani didn't know anything about them. The final point in her testimony was that Sharing Plow never finished the validation of Theranos Tech. We then had Amy Walsh for the defence and she gets Cullen to acknowledge she never spoke to Balwani and she doesn't remember ever meeting him. She pointed out that there were scientists with PhDs from both Theranos and Sharing Plow uh, there during the whole of the due diligence meeting that Cullen spoke about. This was really a meeting amongst the scientists between Theranos and Sharing Plow. Cullen agreed and acknowledged that she never said she had unanswered questions. Bawani's attorney then points to a March 2010 email in which Holmes congratulated Cullen on a promotion. Cullen thanked her and said she'd asked a scientist from my group to reach out to discuss the specifics of the validation. When this questioning took place, Cullen reiterated the point she'd made earlier that they had never validated the Theranos tech. Daniel Eddin. Daniel Eddin was on the stand next and his testimony in the Holmes trial can be seen here. Now, Daniel reported directly to Holmes and was with the company for many years. Uh, in Holmes' trial, we saw that he had micromanaged visits around the Theranos facility to potential investors. So, for example, they would see rooms with racks of Edison devices, but never be allowed to go in them. And also that they wouldn't see rooms that had all the third-party machines that the company was actually using for blood testing. And we'll cover his further testimony next week. Okay, so just as an observation so far in this trial, Balwani is being portrayed as heavily being involved in the company, and this is quite opposed to his attorney's opening arguments portraying him as, in quotes, just an investor. I'm not sure that they can really carry on that. I guess you'd call it fiction, through into the closing arguments with what we've heard so far, and I'll be interested to see how they deal with that going forward. There was no court this week on Friday, so things wrapped up there, and I believe we're back in court on Tuesday next week. I hope this has been informative, and if you've liked, then please hit the like button. And if you subscribe and hit the notification bell, you won't miss out on future videos. Bye for now.